Hello, hello. How's everybody doing on today? Amen. I pray. I pray that you've had an amazing, productive day. Amen. And that God has used you in a mighty, mighty way on today. Amen. Go ahead and do my shout outs and my roll call. Amen. Hey, Sister Cindy, how you doing? Amen. Hey, Sister Tiffany, how you doing? Amen. Amen. Hey, Sister Clara, how you doing on tonight? Amen. 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 Sister Emma, how you doing? Amen. My mother-in-law, how you doing on tonight? Amen. Amen. Good to see you all on on tonight. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey. How you doing, Brother Melvin? How you doing? Amen. Amen. Good to see you on tonight. Amen. Sister Nancy, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good to see you all on this blessed evening. Amen. And it's my prayer. It's always my prayer that you are richly and truly blessed uh, by what is shared. Amen. And that God uses us to bless you in a mighty and amazing and amazing way. Amen. Amen. We're just going to praise him on tonight. Amen. And give him glory and honor because he deserves it all. Amen. So we're going to get into what God has placed upon our heart to share. Amen. And we pray to God that you are enriched. Amen. And that you are blessed on tonight. Amen. Chris, follow me. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hey. Jesus. Yeah. Blessed Savior. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. I'll say that one more time. Hey. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, ha. praise Him, Jesus, yeah, blessed Savior, <laughs> He's worthy to be praised, yeah. <laughs> From the rising of hey, the sun Until the going down of the same Hey, he's worthy Hey, Jesus is worthy Hey, he's worthy to be praised Glory, yes, Lord, give him glory in all things. Give him the glory, hey, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. This from the rising of hey the sun until the going down of the same hey said he's worthy hey Jesus is worthy hey he's worthy to be praised. Minister Chris, come on. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Help yourself, man. Don't you wait on nobody to praise God for you. Don't wait on nobody to pump you up. Don't wait on nobody to, to pry you and push you. You ought to praise God because he's worthy to be praised. He woke you up. He saved your soul. He gave you a reasonable portion of help and strength. And he deserves it all. Nobody should have to try to remind you to praise God. You ought to wake up in the morning. Every time you open up your eyes, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. For a brand new day. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And the mere fact that you woke me up this morning says, Lord, you got something else for me to do. Lord, have mercy. I don't know about you. Amen. But I love him. Amen. I praise his name. And I understand and I know what he's done for me. Amen. Your praise. Your praise is personal. Amen and praise and praise the Lord. We thank God. My Lord, we thank God for being God and who he is. Amen. And we just thank God for all that he's done. And we thank God. Amen. For just allowing us. Amen. To be in his world. <laughs> amen. And praise and praise the Lord. Amen. On tonight. Amen. We're going to get into what God has placed upon our heart to share. Amen. I'm going to pray on tonight and then we're going to get into the word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this evening. And we thank you for being so good. We thank you for being so kind towards us. We understand and know we are undeserving, Lord, of your love, your grace and your mercy. But Lord, because you're so kind and gracious, Lord, you've granted us, dear God, all your many blessings, dear God. And for that, we say thank you. Not because we've done it all right, dear God. We've fallen short of your glory. But Lord, you still find a way, Lord, to bless us anyway. And we say thank you, dear God. Watch over us on tonight. Lord, bless this live stream on tonight. And allow it, dear God, to be a blessing to each and every individual that listens in on today. We just pray, dear God, even for those who are going to, Lord, tune in later on. That, dear God, they get a word directly from you. Lord, we thank you for using us on tonight. We pray tonight, Lord, that you get all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. Because, Lord, you deserve it all. We thank you, Lord, and we give you honor. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray and ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen again. How you doing, saints of God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Pray that you are doing well on tonight. On tonight, we're going to get into the word of God on tonight, and we're going to continue, amen, our lesson, our series on healthy home, amen, healthy, healthy home, my, 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 um, we've been talking, amen, uh, we talked from Psalm 127, and we talked about the home, and we talked about how when you take a look at the home, Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, what? They labor in vain who build it. Amen. And so 
We've got to understand that if we want healthy Christian homes, if we want homes, amen, to where God is in the midst and God, amen, is getting the glory, we've got to make sure, we've got to make very sure that we are operating in such a way to where God is in the middle of what we are doing. You got to understand that and, and you got to you got to get that in your spirit. And so we looked at Psalm 127 and we talked about the Lord building the house and we talked about the children how they are a blessing. We talked about how the Lord has given us sleep. And so for us to have balance what in our home and all these good things. And so we've got to understand that really and truthfully that in order for us to have homes that are healthy and thriving, we've got to make sure that we allow the word of God to lead us and to guide us and let the Holy Spirit teach us and train us as we as we go along our way. Uh, Psalm 127, uh, also accompanied by uh, Psalm 128. Amen and praise the Lord. When you get time, amen, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Psalm 128, but I just wanted to point it out. Uh, if you take a look at Psalm 128, Psalm 128, uh, it, it goes along with Psalm 127. And it just talks about blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. That goes back to what? Establishing oneself in the Lord, right? Allowing all the things that you do. Be guided by what God, what? What God has said. And it, it goes on, it talks about when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. It goes back when you labor, right? When you work and you labor according to how God wants you to work and labor. Not what? Not to try to get rich and not to try to be famous and not to try to build up your wealth. No, according to what God has said. Right. According to the fact that, guess what? You ought to get up, go in the morning, go to work. But at the same time, amen, when you get off, you got a family to go to and you are to what? You are to enjoy. You are to enjoy your family. So so take time to look at Psalm 128. Amen. As it goes along with Psalm 127, it even talks about the children of the family. And so you've got to understand that the Bible, Lord have mercy, the Bible gives us clear, clear instructions. On how to do it God's way. And I want to let somebody know on tonight. Amen. God's way works. Amen. Praise the Lord. It works. When you have enough faith to do it his way. His way works. Amen. Amen. And praise. And praise the Lord. I want to, I want to do something on tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and I'm going here. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I pray to God that you're blessed. Um, and when we take a look at. The home and we take a look at the family we've got to make sure that we have we, we look at how God established what the home how he established the family right because in many cases sometimes just sometimes people take what God has ordained or what God has put in place and they take it and they kind of turn it around and they do what they want with it. And they talk about all this kind of stuff. Love is love. And no, you got to understand. You got to do it according to the way God has established it so that you can be blessed the way God wants you to be blessed. You can't do it. Watch this. Listen to me. You got to get this one. You can't do it the opposite way of the way God told you to do it and then have your hand out asking God to bless what you're doing. <laughs> can I help you? God is not in the business of blessing our mess. Amen. Even though we are a mess. Amen. Praise the Lord. But he is not in the business of blessing our mess. So watch this. If we don't have enough faith and we don't have enough courage to do what he says, how can we have the audacity, amen, to get mad with God because he's not sharing with us what it is that we feel he should be giving us. No, we've got to do it. What? We've got to do it God's. We've got to do it God's way. So I want to go back, amen, to the very first book of the Bible. Oh, Lord, what, Pastor? Yes, I'm going to the very first book of the Bible, and that's Genesis. Amen. And praise the Lord in the beginning. Amen. You've got to understand that if you want to really understand 
what, where we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing, you've got to look at how God established it What in the beginning. His purpose for establishing it the way he established it and understanding that he established it a certain way for it to work a certain way. And there's some things that we, we deal with because some things that have taken place what at the beginning of time. So we've got to understand these things so that when things arise, amen, in our homes, in our marriages, right, in, in, in our relationships, that we understand that, wait a minute, <laughs> this goes all the way back, amen, to the beginning, to the beginning of time. And in Genesis 1 and 27, look what it says. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him. Watch this, male and female, he created them, right? So you've got to understand. This is where we got to start. He created male and female. <laughs> Can I help you? It doesn't matter if you want to be called binary, you know, trinary, whatever you want to be called. He made male and female. Amen and praise the Lord. And so we've got to establish that. Amen. God made a man <laughs> and he made a woman. Amen. And watch. Pastor, you're saying, Pastor, why is that so significant? you got to understand. He made male and female so that you can have a home because from male and female, you are going to get children. Amen. Praise the Lord who will produce more males and females. Amen. And the process continues itself. Amen. So you've got to understand, back to the beginning of time, God created man in his own image. He created male and female. I'm going to go on to ch uh, chapter 2, right? Chapter 2, right? Go to chapter 2, and I want you to go now, I want you to go to verse uh, number 18, right? Verse number 18, amen, and praise the Lord. Now watch, this word is not for somebody, amen, who, who, who feels as though, amen, they can take the word and, and, and kind of try to interpret it and turn it in their own way. No, this word is for those who want the truth of God's word and want to be taught according to what God wants his people to do. Doesn't matter what the times say. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter how you feel. Amen and praise the Lord. Truth remains truth no matter what's going on with you, no matter if you, you in your feelings or not. Amen and praise the Lord. So go to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18. Amen. This word is for the spiritual. Amen. So watch this. It says this. And the Lord said, God said, it is not good for man or that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Now watch. He made a man. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He made a man. But look what he said. He says, I will make him a helper compatible to him. Watch what the word goes on to say. Out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each creature, that was its name. Watch. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Watch this. Watch this. But for Adam, there was not found a helper compatible to him. All right, or comparable to him, right? And so you got to understand that. So out of all the animals that God created, out of all the things that God made, amen, you got to understand there was no nothing compatible or comparable to him. So look what he did. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Watch. And then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into one man and he brought her to man. God made woman for man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. God made woman for man. Amen. And praise the Lord. Now, Pastor about to share something with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you got to get it. Amen. And you got to understand it. Amen. And praise the Lord. God made one man. Amen. For man. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you got to understand. God made the woman the way he made the woman so that the man would desire the woman. 
He didn't make her in a way to where man wouldn't want her. Amen. Praise the Lord. So watch what Adam, watch what Adam said. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then the rib, amen. Watch this. It said, God, Adam said, now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Adam said, oh, she mine. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so Adam saw what God had made and he understood and he looked at Eve and he said, mm -mm -mm, look at the handiworks of God. Amen. And praise the Lord. So he made woman for man. Amen. Watch this. He made woman desirable to man so that what man would what procreate. Oh, pastor, what you talking about? I'm talking what's in the Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Didn't the Bible say he what he told them to be fruitful? And multiply. Lord have mercy. Come with me if you can. And look what it says in verse 24. And therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined, watch this, to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Lord have mercy. So you've got to understand this one thing. The way God designed the family or the home to actually be established, amen, by the relationship between the man or the husband of, and the wife, who's the woman, right? And so that relationship, that initial relationship, can I help you? If it is unhealthy, oh Lord, help me, Holy Spirit. If it is unhealthy, if, if, if the, the man and woman don't understand that God put them together, if, if the man and woman don't understand their purpose, if they don't understand that God didn't just put them together to be a power couple, oh Lord have mercy, he put you together, amen, to glorify him, amen, to be fruitful and to multiply and to glorify what? His name. So when that initial relationship, amen, is healthy, can I help you? It will spill over, amen, and you will be allowed to have healthy relationships in the family as a whole. Because why? Because when the children come, right, it will be a healthy home because mom and dad understand, amen, that that initial relationship has got to be healthy, amen, before they can have a healthy relationship with their children. So watch this. It says, and the two shall become what? one flesh. Lord have mercy. So you've got to understand it. So when you look at the home, the home, amen, begins with the initial healthy relationship of the man and the woman. I want to help somebody on tonight. You better hear me and you better hear me well. When one says, I want to make a home with this individual, I want to marry what this individual. I want to become one with this individual. Can I help you? Don't you dare get married for money. Don't you dare get married for status. Don't you dare get married because you're trying to impress somebody. Don't you dare get married because you feel, oh, I'm getting old. I need a husband. I'm getting too old. I need a wife. No, you better make sure you're getting married according to what God has said. He says this. He says the man ought to understand, amen, when he looks at that woman. <laughs> this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She'll be, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. What does that mean? This is what that means. The relationship between that man and that woman, amen, has got to be strong enough to where you don't let your mama, amen, get all up in your stuff. You don't let your daddy get all up in your stuff. You don't let your kinfolk get all up in your stuff. Not saying that God can't use them to help guide you and to lead you, but can I help you? He said they are to leave their father and mother. Leave. <laughs> leave. Amen. Me and my wife, amen, when we got married, amen, praise the Lord. You can stop and ask if you want, amen. I told her when we first got married, I said, I'm marrying you, <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. And anything that goes on in this house, amen, me and you going to work it out. 
not saying we can't go get, you know, seek whatever we need to seek out there. But at the same time, amen, whatever goes on here, it's me and you. Amen. And praise the Lord. So we're going to work it out, work it out, work it out. Amen. Us and the Lord. Amen. So we've got to understand that that relationship, amen, between that man and that woman has to be one, a bond that's strong. That's why, amen, as a pastor, you've got to understand that when I share with couples, when I share, amen, couples that are married or share with couples that want to get married, I share with them, make sure you know what you're getting into. And I share with them this thing. I say, make sure. That you go into the relationship not wanting to change your spouse. Not wanting to have a, to try to, you know, make your spouse to be something that you want them to be. When you walk down the aisle, when you say I do, amen, make sure when you look at him or when you look at her, it's what you see is what you get. <laughs> amen. And praise the Lord. If the Lord never changes her. If the Lord never changes him, amen, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, amen, we leave father and mother and be joined, amen, and praise the Lord, understanding that, guess what, we're not just hooking up just to hook up, we're not hooking up, amen, to leave one another, <laughs> we're in it for the long haul, amen, and praise and praise the Lord. I'm going to ask a couple of questions on tonight or share some things with you. On tonight, and I pray to God that it blesses you in some way. This is what I want you to understand. For those who may not be married yet, I want you. I want you to get this one. Listen to me, and listen to me well. I wanna. I want. I want you to get this one. For those who are who are not yet married, Amen. I want to ask you a question: Are you looking for an old man, <laughs> a sugar daddy, or are you looking for a husband? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. Can I help you? I had an old lady tell me one, an uh, 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 older lady tell me one time, don't you dare call your wife your old lady. That's your wife. Amen. And, and look, when she told me that, she meant it. And guess what? It wasn't even my mother. She, it wasn't my mother that told me that. It was an old lady. Don't call your wife your old lady. That's your wife, boy. And let me tell you something. Tell from that day. Amen. Praise the Lord. I never refer to my wife as my old lady. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you shouldn't be married to your, or your old man. No, 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 no. My old man. Uh, 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 uh. That's the world's way. Uh, uh. It's your husband. Amen. Praise the Lord. When, when you're getting married, you should be looking for a husband. Can I help you? Even when you're dating, you should be looking for a husband or a wife. If you ain't married yet, you should be looking for a husband or a wife. Not just somebody you're going to lay and play with. Oh, Lord, you're going to get in trouble, Pastor. Woo, Jesus. Are oh, you looking for an old man, a sugar daddy, or a husband? Because can I help you? If you're looking for a sugar daddy, when the money run out, what you going to do? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you for a richer or for poor. Amen. And praise the Lord. If you're looking, amen. I want to ask you the question. Are you looking for an old lady, a trophy, or a wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because they got some. They want to, you know, say they marry somebody because they got somebody pretty on their arm. Can I help you? If that's the only reason why you're marrying that woman, can I help you? You might want to rethink that thing because time bring about a change. Amen. And praise the Lord. And gravity take hold. <laughs> Amen. So we've got to understand when we take a look at the family, when we take a look at the home, the relationship between the husband and the wife initially has to be right. And I want to help somebody on tonight. Listen to me and listen to me well. The world has adopted the garbage. Amen. That two individuals, amen, with the same type anatomy can hook up. When you look at the word of God, if you marry, join together or hook up. A man and you're walking down the aisle with somebody that got the same plumbing as you. Can I help you? God says you done started wrong. So guess what? You can't even ask for God's blessing. Oh, Lord. Yes, I said it. Amen. And praise the Lord. you got to start right. If the home does not start right. That way, and it's established that way, you've got to understand, don't you dare ask for God's 
blessing. You just doing it on your own. Amen. Because if you believe what God says, you've got to trust to do it the way God says to do it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble tonight. Amen. I might lose some viewers. Amen. Praise the Lord. But i got to tell the truth and shame the devil because the world should never dictate to the Christian family what they should do. Amen. And praise the Lord. Ain't saying you go around, amen, and mistreat folk, but you got to stand on truth all day long. Amen. And praise the Lord. Now, I want to share something. I want to move on to, to chapter number three. And, and, and chapter number three, <laughs> praise the Lord, chapter number three is, 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 is real, real interesting. And many of the things, amen, that 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 we deal with in in our in, in in our relationships in marriages, Amen. We've got to understand that some of the it's 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 the results of what has already happened at the beginning of time. And I want you to get this. I want you to get this. And you've got to be in the spirit to receive this. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go through uh, chapter three. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pause too much. I'm just gonna kind of. Run through it because I got so much other stuff I want to share with us. Amen. Praise God. I may not even get through it. Amen. But let, let's roll. Amen. Chapter 3 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Watch this. Now watch. The, 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 the serpent. Now the serpent represents the enemy. Watch this. Let me show you what he does. Listen to me. This is what he does. He says, And he said to the woman, Oh, Lord. <laughs> And he said to the woman, you see, you got to understand something. Listen to me and listen to me well. Satan is tricky and he knows what he's doing. I'm going to use this illustration and I pray to God that you receive it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Watch this. There have been on many occasions. Be careful. Many occasions. Amen. Going to buy a vehicle. <laughs> amen. And praise the Lord. Go to buy a vehicle. Amen. And let me tell you who the salesman will target. You got to get this one. This is no different. The salesman will target the woman. Let me tell you why. Because she, he knows that if she likes what she sees, amen, he can, she can get to his heart, amen. She can influence him to spend money he don't have. <laughs> I hope I help somebody, amen. Praise the Lord. Watch this, watch this. And what will happen is they'll try to mess with your ego. He'll go to her and say, hmm, you need to try to, you need to tell him he need, you know, top being cheap and go ahead on and buy that vehicle. Now, now he knowing the budget, <laughs> the budget won't allow it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he going to go to the, the woman to try to mess with his ego. Oh, Lord, Amen. to influence him to get something he can't afford. Amen. The devil is tricky. Amen. And can I help you? In 2023, it is no different. Amen. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. The serpent went to the woman. Lord have mercy. Why? Because he knew if he could, if he could kind of influence her in some kind of way, he could get her to influence him to do something, amen, that he shouldn't be doing. Lord have mercy. I pray you with me. I'll come with me if you can. Come with me if you can. Right? This is what the word says. Look what it says. It says this. It says, and he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now watch. Remember now, God had established, he said, do not eat of the tree. Amen. The tree of knowledge. Amen. Right? Watch this. He got to understand that he used Eve. To get Adam to consume of the tree that God told him to what? To stay away from. And he said, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but the fruit of the tree, watch, was in the midst of the garden. God said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Watch. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. See that? Knowing what God had already said. <laughs> For God knows that in the day you eat, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant for the eyes and the tree desirable for one make one wise, she took its fruit and ate, watch this, and also gave to her husband with her and he ate as well. Watch this. You got to get this. The enemy used Eve in order to do something. Amen. Praise the Lord that he really, really shouldn't do. Amen. Now watch. It was something.
something desirable. It was something she wanted. It was something desirable. And watch this. Watch this. He used her to get Adam to do what God had what told him not to do. Amen. And praise the Lord. That is why. In our homes, we've got to make sure that we don't give place or room, what, to the enemy because he's tricky. He uses situations, amen. He uses people. He he puts stuff and plants stuff in our mind to get us to think and stuff that we know ain't right. We've got to make sure we're rooted in the word. That's why we ought to stay prayed up. That's why we ought to stay in the word. Watch this. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covered. You got to get this one. You got to come with me on this one. Lord, have mercy. You got to come with me on this one. Look. I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to show you the consequences of what Adam and Eve did and how we're still dealing with some of those same things. Watch this. Verse 14, it says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat the dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. That's talking about Christ, right? He's going to put enmity between his seed and her seed, meaning, watch this, between his seed and Christ. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That is an indication of Christ coming, right? Because Christ is going to bruise the head of Satan, right? He's going to what? Death, where have your sin? Grave, where is your victory? And to the woman, watch this. He said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow in conception. Ooh, Lord, watch this. And in pain, you shall bring forth your... It's a consequence. And your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. I'm going to tell you, I, I got to stop right here. When it says your desire will be for your husband, go study it, go research it. You will want to control and rule your husband. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Right? So watch. Let me break this down. In conception, right, you will have sorrow in your, in your conception. And in pain, you shall bring forth children. Watch this. Not just in childbirth, in childbearing. And even as long as those children are here, amen and praise the Lord. You've got to understand. And that's why a mother's love is different from a father's love. Because that boy or that girl could be low down, no good, doing stuff they ain't got no business doing. But mama going to love him anyhow. He, she going to make excuses for him. She going to lie for him. She going to do all kind of stuff for him. You know why? Because it's a curse from the first. Lord have mercy. Praise the Lord. But it's understanding and knowing, amen, and praise the Lord. You've got to operate in the truth of God's word. So watch, you can't allow, amen, what has happened, amen, in the past to repeat itself. Once you know that, now you've got to allow yourself to operate, what, according to the word of God. And you'll be able to rearrange it, hold up, I know I want to do this. I know I want to go to bat for him. I know I want to make excuses for him. But what? Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he grows old, he will not depart. It may what? It may break you down. It may make you cry. But you've got to understand that God wants you to do it what? His way. And look what it says. Her desire shall be for her husband. She's going to want to run him. She's going to want to control him. And can I help? I want to help. I want to help you women out there. Amen. If you find a man, amen, <laughs> that's willing to tell you no. If you find a man, not beat you down, not beat you down, not beat your self-esteem, don't take it that way. Willing to tell you no. Amen, praise the Lord. And, and willing to stand up and have his own mind. Can I help you? You really got a real man. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Because why? He understands and knows God made him a man. Amen. And praise the Lord. And if he's going to be the head, he's got to sometimes make some decisions that you don't like. <laughs> Amen. And run the risk. And run the risk of you mistreating him. Amen. And praise the Lord. But at the same time. You got to understand, it's a curse from the, that desire to want to what? Control him. Amen. 
Stop trying to control him. Stop trying to change him. Stop trying to make him be what you want him to be. He's a man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There were men in the beginning of time. And can I help you? There are men now. Can I help you? A man's going to be a man. He's not going to think like you. He's not going to roll like you. Can I help you? When you marry a man, you marry a, a, a man. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to understand. If you're marrying a man, you're not marrying a woman. So he ain't going to think like you. He ain't going to do everything you feel he should do. Can I help you? Because you married a man. Amen. And praise the Lord. But it says her desire will be for her husband. So she's going to try to rule and control him. But look what he told Adam. He says, then he said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you saying, you shall not eat of it. Watch. Cursed is the ground for your sake. And toil, you, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So watch. He is to toil and eat from his labor, from toiling and tilling the ground. Watch this. Both thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth to you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. You're going to work till you die. <laughs> For out of it you were taken, for the dust you are, and to the dust you shall return. So watch this. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you got a man who won't work, oh Lord have mercy. I'm praying for you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Because he ought to work. Amen. He ought to work. Amen. Because why? God has commanded him to work. Amen. And work by the sweat of of his brow. Amen and praise the Lord. And you got to get it. Amen. So watch this. Watch this. You got to understand that God established it from the beginning. Amen. And there's some things we are dealing with because of what Adam and Eve has done. But at the same time, God established the home. He established the family. He established husband and wife. Amen. And for us to deviate from that, says God, you made a mistake. <laughs> and can I help you? God didn't make. God didn't make no mistakes. Lord have mercy. And so you got to get that in your spirit. My prayer is that you understand that when God made and established the home, he wants us to understand that that husband and wife relationship is so vital and important. And I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Pastor, you know, I'm no longer married. Pastor, I, I don't, I'm not married anymore. Pastor, I moved on. Pastor, no, but you got to understand. That doesn't say that something is wrong with you. It's just saying that God has given us the roadmap as to how to do it. Amen and praise the Lord. And can I help you? Any effort, anything you do moving forward, amen, that goes against what God has established. Can I help you? You're working against yourself. I'm not bashing single mothers. I'm not bashing single fathers. No, if that's your case, that's your case. Amen. God will make the difference. All I'm saying is that God has established it to work a certain way. And when we go apart from what he's what established, when we get into it for the wrong reason, when we don't realize the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing, then what we do is we really bring devastation on our relationship and on our home. We've got to start right. Amen. And praise the Lord. So watch this. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, I want to give you more, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't give you enough. Amen. Because some folk, amen. Oh, I don't know about this. Real. Well, you, you, hey, you look in the word. Amen. God said it. Amen. With, next week, we're going to take a look at something. And we're going to take a look. We're going to take a look at the home as it relates to our children. Oh, Lord, have mercy. you don't want to miss that one. Amen. You don't want to miss that one. Amen. And from the beginning of time, from the beginning of time. And we're going to take a look at some things. We think we think we're going through some brand new stuff. Can I help you? Ain't nothing new under the sun. <laughs> nothing new under the sun. And I pray it blesses you in some kind of way. So next week, please tune in. Amen. We're going to deal with the healthy home. And we're going to deal with, amen, a home that brings glory to God. Amen. I pray you tune in, invite somebody, let somebody know, amen, the word is going forth. Amen. And pray. If it's blessed you in some kind of way, share with somebody, amen, amen, and, 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 and let somebody know, amen, the word is going forth. 
amen, as it relates to the family, a healthy, a healthy home, amen, and praise the Lord, amen, I, I thank God for you all on tonight, amen, and I pray to God, amen, I pray to God that you were richly and truly blessed on this wonderful, wonderful evening, amen, I want to pray with you and pray for you on tonight, amen, and we're going to let you go, amen, and praise the Lord. Dear God, we thank you for this evening, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you for just watching over us, and we just pray that you would allow us, dear God, to receive your word, Lord, live your word, and do what we may, and do what we must, dear God, to follow what you have said. We just pray right now, dear God, that you would just, Lord, touch us on tonight. We just pray, Lord, that you help us, dear God, to let your word be what it needs to be in our lives, dear God. So that, dear God, we don't compromise your word. Lord, we don't try to make the word fit to what we want. But we understand. We understand what thus saith the Lord. Help us to study your word. But not just study it. Spend time with you. Meditate on it. And let you speak to us through your word. We just pray tonight for families all over the world, dear God. Lord, families are struggling all over, dear God. But dear God, I know without a shadow of a doubt it's because we've moved away from what you've established, dear God. Lord, I pray right now, dear God, you help families all over, Lord, to Lord, turn back to you. Turn back to your word. Turn back to the principles that you established and laid out and allow what you have said to lead and to guide and to direct them along their way. Lord, have your way. Have thine own way. We thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord. We pray for those who are ailing in their physical bodies on tonight. Touch them tonight. We pray for those, Lord, who are ailing in their minds. Touch their minds and give them comfort and peace. We pray for those who are lost on tonight. Don't have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Don't understand that Jesus Christ paid the price and the penalty for their sins. Don't understand that Jesus Christ paid the price for them and for the sins that they committed. And that he was buried and that he rose the third day, Lord. I pray for them, Lord. You touch their heart and help them accept your love on tonight. I pray for some parent, Lord, with a wayward child, Lord. I pray you touch that relationship, touch that situation. I pray for some husband, Lord, who's on the on the edge, Lord, who's ready to give up, Lord. Give him, Lord, give him what he needs to understand that God, that really and truthfully, when he looked at what he got into, Lord, he promised their God and vowed to love that woman for the rest of his life. I pray for some wife who's on the edge, dear God. Lord, I pray, Lord, you touch her and keep her, dear God, and help her to understand, Lord, that when she made those vows, she made them for life. I pray for some couple, Lord, some engaged couple, Lord, that they look at your word and see what you say. And, dear God, just do what they can to go by what it is that you said, dear God. Lord, have thine own way, Father God. Move, dear God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And, Lord, we sure enough adore you because, Lord, you're good. And, Lord, we know all of our blessings, not some of, all of our blessings, all of our blessings come from you. We thank you, we praise you, and we do love you. It's in Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints of God. Amen. I pray to God that you are blessed on tonight. Amen. It's my prayer. Amen. That the word of God has gone forth and has blessed you in some kind of way. Amen. Good night, you all, and be blessed. Amen and amen again. Good night, y'all. Love you.